Now the recipe for the stone wash is going to be two parts of the sepia India ink, it's going to be three parts of the bat fluid medium, and three parts of the slow dry fluid retarder. Now whenever you're using the India ink, once again be sure you take this thing off of here and you actually stir this up because this stuff really settles down to the bottom. You might even lift up a clump of you know a clump of ink that's off there. Just shaking up the bottle is not going to do it. You really need to uh, uh, stir this up with a uh, stir this up with a paintbrush handle really well. And then what I would do is after you stir it up with a paintbrush handle, I'd screw the lid back on and I'd go ahead and shake this sucker up real well after that. So let's go ahead. Uh, two parts of this. We're going to go. Uh, there's one sepia ink. Two parts sepia ink. There we go. We want three parts of the matte fluid medium. One, two, three. There's that. Yeah, I'll clean that up later. And then three parts of the slow dry fluid retarder. One, two, three. And we are going to mix that all up together for our wash. And you know, I'm thinking that that's probably going to be enough wash to do all of the floors that we're going to have here. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that up. And you can see it's, it's you know, fairly thin. It's, it's a fairly thin mixture. Okay, we're going to go ahead and apply our wash to the floor. And when you got done, you probably noticed that this floor tile looks a little bit light. It's intentionally light because it's going to darken up with the wash. What I'm going to do is we mixed up the wash um, and um, be sure that you uh, stir this up good because it may have been sitting there a while after you mixed it up and that India ink, that uh, sepia India ink will settle to the bottom. Uh, get yourself kind of a, a wide, fairly soft bristled brush and what we're going to do is we're going to evenly go over it. So. Uh, I'm just going to take this, we're going to dip it in, and what we're going to do is just uh, wash across it. And you'll see it, it darkens it a little bit, and it actually enhances, uh, enhances the, uh, the crevices, the dark places in here. Okay, I'm not sure how well the camera will get this, but let's try it again up close so you can kind of see what, the, uh, what it looks like before and after. So we're just going to apply this wash over the top of it. And I would uh, stir up this wash uh, between uh, every other piece that you do. So we're going to apply the wash on there like that. And then you can see, you know, you've got several dark puddles. So I'm just going to blot up the excess off of here on a paper towel. And then I'll go across it and we'll pull some of that excess off of here. So I'm just going to kind of blot up the excess, dab it on a paper towel blot up the excess, dot on a paper towel, and even when you blot up the excess, this stuff will still flow back into the spots it's supposed to flow into. I just kind of realized when painting the floor tiles, it's easier to start with the sides. That way you can hold it top and bottom and go ahead and get all four sides. After you get all four sides, you can just simply lay the piece down and then go ahead and apply the ink wash to the top last, and then you don't have to pick the piece up again. Now I just wanted to compare it before and after on the floor. This is what we had done when we dry brush it, it looks pretty good. And this is what we had done after the ink wash that goes over top of it. So you can kind of see a difference. I'll see if I can kind of bring these up to the, uh, up to the camera so you can kind of tell uh, the difference in the, uh, in the look. I think the one with the ink wash is just it's just a bit richer. And it's, it's more defined on its pattern. It, uh, it looks really more like cavern rock uh, or you know rock that would be in a in a cave of some sort or on mine walls or, or on things like that so I think it works out I like the wash I think it adds just a little more color to it for some reason without the wash this rock seems a bit dry like it would be above ground uh, something like that but the wash uh, with the wash it works, I think, much better for underground uh, situations. 
Now the next step is going to be to glue the wall sections onto the floor. Now right now when you set it on, it looks like the colors aren't going to work out quite like you might picture they will. This looks very red and the floor looks very different. But once we put the second wash onto the brick, it's going to brown it, it's going to darken it. Uh, so it'll match the floor a little bit more. Actually, it'll probably look more like this sample right here. So to glue this on, we're just going to take our Aline's Tacky glue here. I'm just going to start with the back. I, don't, I think it could go on either way. It's not really going to matter. Uh, be sure that you apply a, a really good uh, bead of glue on this. You want this to, to hold down really well. And uh, we also need it on both ends, the side, because these walls connect. So I'm going to apply it liberally here and here as well. Alrighty. And then we're just going to drop this uh, right about there. And then we're going to do the same for the other, uh, other wall sections here. Just apply a, a good bead of glue. Here we go. Let's get the lid. Okay, and this one's going to go right here, and the last wall will be glued on here, and we're going to glue all of our pieces uh, down to the uh, floor tiles next. Uh, the next step is to go ahead and apply the wash. Be sure this is completely dry. Uh, I would do it the next day, just to be sure things like this right here, these little posts, you don't want them to pop off when you're when you're brushing ink on it and trying to wipe, uh, wipe ink off with the... Uh, a moist uh, towelette there.